Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. So today's video might be a little bit different than most of my other videos just because it is an ongoing case. It's a very recent case, but I still wanted to make sure I took the time to bring attention to this case because it is just so horrifying and heartbreaking. This case hits close to home because it happened in my home city of Chicago, Illinois, and seeing this entire case just unravel the way it did on the news was just absolutely gut-wrenching. What this poor woman went through is just absolutely horrific and brutal, and I would not wish this on my worst enemy. With that being said, today we are going to be talking about the brutal case of Marlene Ochoa. Marlene was born on November 16, 1999 in San Luis de Loma in Mexico and was brought to the United States as a toddler. Her and her family lived in the city of Chicago in Illinois, very close to where I live. Marlene was going through high school while raising her three-year-old son and carrying another son at the time that she went missing. Marlene was the oldest of four siblings and had always taken on the more motherly role and did whatever she could to not only take care of her three-year-old son, but to take care of her own siblings. She was caring and creative with aspirations to complete high school and go on to work in the fashion industry and become a singer. She loved writing songs and listening to music. She did well in school and spent hours studying and doing homework. She was just overall a very sweet, caring, intelligent, and motivated young woman. Now, like I said, Marlene had her three-year-old son who she absolutely adored and doted on, but she never got the chance to have a baby shower for for him, so her family was actually planning a surprise baby shower in late April to celebrate the life that she was currently carrying. However, this baby shower would not actually happen, and on April 23rd, 2019, just a few weeks before Marlene's due date, she went missing. Now, when Marlene first found out that she was pregnant, she, like many other expecting mothers these days, joined a Facebook group with other mothers who were expecting. This is usually a great way for expecting mothers to connect with one another and support each other through their pregnancies. Expecting mothers can help each other out through these Facebook groups by trading different items, giving each other advice, and just being there for one another through this stressful life transition. Now, another member of this Facebook group was Clarissa Figuiora. Clarissa was the mother of a 24-year-old daughter, Desiree, and the family also lived in Chicago. Now, in late 2018, Clarissa also announced on Facebook that she was pregnant. She posted ultrasound photos and photos of her newly decorated baby rooms to Facebook and acted all excited and ready for this new beginning. This pregnancy announcement came shortly after Clarissa's adult son had actually passed away from natural causes. However, Desiree and others who knew Clarissa were a little bit shocked and confused at this pregnancy announcement because Clarissa had actually had her tubes tied to prevent pregnancy. Someone on Facebook had actually called her out and asked her, you know, how did you get pregnant when you had your tubes tied? And Clarissa kind of had a pretty ridiculous excuse. She said, I had an emergency surgery for my appendix. Well, when they went to remove it, they see a cyst, I'm assuming, on my ovary. Well, they had to untie my ovary. Well, after they removed it, they forgot to tie it back up. Here I am a year later having a baby. The woman replied, Crazy girl, get yourself a lawyer regardless of the little miracle, get your money. So basically, Clarissa had planned this entire thing well in advance. Now, on March 5th, 2018, Clarissa posted to this Facebook group asking who was due in May. These types of posts are pretty common in this type of group because 
you know, women with similar due dates can connect and support each other and, you know, maybe even set up play dates for their babies after they give birth. So of course, with Marlin also being due in May, the two connected. So the two connected via Facebook and Clarissa offered Marlene some new baby clothes. So the two chatted via Facebook to plan their meetup. Marlene asked Clarissa, what's your location, hun? And Clarissa says, I'm on the south side of Chicago by 79th and Pulaski. If you want to wait a week, my girl had all brand new boy clothes her son never wore. Marlene replied back, yes, girl, that's fine. Thank you so much. And Clarissa said, no problem, girl. I know how it is. She was lucky to have two baby showers, so she just wanted to spread the wealth. I'm fine with the help. Inbox me for more info, okay? Sorry, they're kind of hard to read because of, you know, the typos and grammar and things like that. But anyways, Marlon was just excited and grateful to receive free brand new baby clothes for her little boy. So the two met up on April 1st and the entire meeting was perfectly fine. However, on April 23rd, Marlon went out for a second time, but this time she never returned home. Now, at first, no one had any idea of what could have possibly happened to Marlene. It was as if she just went out and disappeared. The family had no idea what she was doing or where she could be. Of course, everyone had their suspicions at the time, but there was no real evidence of what could have possibly happened to her. For about two and a half to three weeks, the family lived through the stress and horror of having no idea where their pregnant daughter and wife was. Now, I do remember saying this on the news that, you know, immediately after she went missing, they went out and searched for her and kind of didn't know what was going on. But as the story kind of went on, they were starting to suspect certain people, but they hadn't quite gotten to that point yet. Now, while the family and police were desperately searching for this pregnant and endangered young woman, 911 received a call from a woman who claimed to have just given birth at home to a newborn baby who was not breathing. This woman was Clarissa Figiora. Of course, first responders showed up to the home and they said that when they got there, the little baby boy was just blue. They took this newborn baby and tried to resuscitate him while rushing him and Clarissa to the nearby hospital. However, when Clarissa arrived to Christ Medical Center in Oak Lawn, Doctors who examined her said that she had blood all over her hands, arms, and face, but there was no signs consistent with a woman who had just given birth. This was obviously extremely alarming that this woman who just showed up claiming having given birth was all bloody, but showed absolutely no signs of having delivered a baby. Despite this, the hospital actually did not contact police or CPS right away. The Oaklawn Police Department said that they had no idea about this entire situation and were never notified and neither were CPS. We are not sure exactly why they chose not to contact anyone, let alone the authorities, and when asked why, the hospital declined to comment citing federal and state regulations. But still, they are mandated reporters and are supposed to report sightings like this, so the fact that they didn't is questionable and people really are just trying to get to the bottom of this. When this newborn baby boy was brought into the hospital, he was in a critical condition and had severe brain damage due to lack of oxygen to his brain and was not expected to survive. Because of this, Clarissa actually started a GoFundMe page for the funeral costs for her dying baby boy who she named Xander. She wrote, the neonatal intensive care unit at Christ Hospital is a special place that I hope none of you ever need to be a part of. This part of the hospital is where they care for the sickest and tiniest baby who may live in the hospital for months at a time. They went on to say, on April 23rd, Clarissa Figiora, pregnant at 36 weeks, 
found herself terrified as she began to experience abnormal labor pains while alone in her house. Within moments, she gave birth to her son, Xander, at seven pounds as she called 911 and followed the instructions of the dispatcher. Quickly, the ambulance came and rushed the baby and performed CPR as they found the baby had been struggling without oxygen. They were both admitted to the hospital to discover Clarissa was suffering from preeclampsia, explaining the sudden birth. Xander, his mother Clarissa, and his father Pietor Bobak have found themselves staying at Christ Hospital, desperately hoping Xander will pull through. They are preparing to say goodbye to their baby boy as they have to accept that Xander won't survive too much longer. So at this point, Clarissa is setting up this entire thing about, you know, her dying baby boy, trying to get people to give her money for these funeral arrangements. However, on May 7th, police made the connection between Clarissa and Marlene after Marlene's friends showed detectives her Facebook account that showed that the two had been in communication with each other. The police were finally starting to realize that there was this very pregnant woman who just went missing and this other woman who had just shown up to the hospital with a baby despite no signs of her actually giving birth. Birth. Police started closing in on Clarissa and performed a DNA test on this dying little baby and actually found out to everyone's shock and horror that this baby was Marlene's. Somehow, this random woman who Marlene only knew through brief interactions on Facebook had Marlene's baby. Now, I'm going to go over exactly how Clarissa came to having possession of Marlene's baby, but the details are extremely brutal, extremely graphic, and if you're someone who's sensitive to this type of thing, please just fast forward through this part. I know most of the things that we talk about on this channel are extremely sad and sometimes graphic, but this is a whole new level of disturbing and was incredibly difficult just to read. So of course, this entire thing of Clarissa being pregnant and her tubes being untied, all of that was just this massive scheme that she had been planning from the very beginning. As we know, the two connected on Facebook and met up on April 1st without incident. However, on April 23rd, Marlin unknowingly walked into this whole plot to kill her and steal her baby. Now, after the first meeting on April 1st, Desiree, Clarissa's 24-year-old daughter, told her boyfriend that her mother had a plot to kill Marlene and the boyfriend told Desiree that he would call the police if Marlene was harmed. However, Clarissa just told the boyfriend that it was this April Fool's joke, so he ended up not calling the police. However, we know that it was not an April Fool's joke because on April 23rd, Clarissa and Desiree killed Marlene. When Marlene got to the home, Desiree brought out a photo album of her deceased brother, the brother that I mentioned earlier who died of natural causes, to show Marlene to distract her while Clarissa came up and strangled her with a cord. Now, Marlene fought for her life and managed to get her fingers under the cord, but Clarissa yelled at Desiree, you're not doing your effing job. So she started prying Marlene's fingers from the cord one by one. After five minutes of intense fight and struggle, Marlene had passed away. Once Marlene showed no signs of life, they used a butcher knife to cut the baby and placenta out of the womb placed them in a bucket with the umbilical cord still attached. Then they wrapped Marlene in a blanket and put her body into a plastic bag and dragged her into a garbage can in a hidden area next to their garage. This was only about four miles away from Marlene's own home. Now, again, police had finally connected the two and went to the home to question Clarissa, but they were actually met with Desiree, who told police that her mother was in the hospital with a leg injury and had also mentioned that Clarissa had just delivered a baby. However, police searched the neighborhood and found that Marlene's car was 
just a few blocks down the road, so they returned to the home a few days later with a warrant. Three weeks after Marlene had gone missing, police searched the home and found Marlene's body. This is the most brutal and heinous crime anyone can go through. I cannot begin to understand what was going through this woman's head when she chose to do this to another human being. I don't understand how she thought she was somehow going to get a healthy baby boy out of this. How did she think this child was going to survive after being ripped out of his mother's womb and then placed in a bucket after strangling her for five minutes? So of course, Clarissa and her daughter were charged with first degree murder and aggravated battery and Clarissa's boyfriend was charged with concealment of a homicide and all of them were denied bond. All three are being held in Cook County Jail and are awaiting trial. As far as we know right now, Marlon's baby boy is still alive, but he's in grave condition and is not expected to survive. This entire situation is absolutely gut-wrenching and my heart goes out to Marlon's husband and the rest of her family. I can't even imagine what they're going through right now. Yavani Lopez, Marlon's husband said, it's so hurtful losing a wife that you spend beautiful moments with. It's a nostalgia that doesn't fit in my heart. I want to scream or do something to get rid of this pain. I feel at peace for having found her. I didn't find her how I wanted, alive and next to me. They are still holding out hope that at the very least through all of this terror that the baby will survive. At this point, that's all they want, just that very last piece of Marlene that they still have left. Clarissa Figuera and everyone else who are involved are just completely mentally disturbed. They took away a mother from her three-year-old child. They ripped away the life that was growing inside of her after ripping away her own life. They ripped apart a family and took a wife and a daughter and a mother. They took everything from this family just because of her own demented, selfish wants. Clarissa was probably hurting from the loss of her own son, but to make someone else hurt in such a way is just the most despicable thing that she could have done. There's other ways to cope with the loss of a child. Marlon had a bright future ahead of her and a family who loved her. Neither her or her baby or her family deserved any of this. I have absolutely no sympathy for whatever will happen to Clarissa or her daughter in jail. And, you know, they will remain there hopefully for the rest of their lives. So that is all I have for the video today. Again, this is a solved case, but I just wanted to get Marlene's story out there. What she went through is the most horrific and terrifying thing that anyone can go through and my heart truly goes out to her family and I am praying that her baby boy does survive. Additionally, I will keep everyone updated on this case as it is very active and an ongoing case. So if you did like today's video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Also, make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Both are linked in the description below. Also, if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to email them to me at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye!